Hello and welcome to episode 18 of ARM Template Masterclass. In this episode, we're going to continue the work we did looking at testing ARM templates last week. So in last week's episode, we looked at running some pre-configured tests using the ARM TTK. So these were tests that were already written for us, we just ran them to get some feedback on best practice for our templates. This week, we're going to take it a step further and see how we can write tests for ourselves. So custom tests that we, we write that do whatever we want to test our ARM templates. I'm going to be using a tool called PESTA to write these tests. Now PESTA is a testing framework written in PowerShell, but you can use any test framework you, you want to work with really. So if you're familiar with something else, so long as it can interact with the JSON files that we're going to be testing, then you could use your favorite testing framework. Um, but PESTA is a nice one to pick up if you've not used one before, particularly if you're familiar with uh, PowerShell. Uh, it's a nice, easy uh, starter language if you're, if you're already familiar with how to write other PowerShell scripts. Now, we don't have a lot of time today to go into the intricacies of PESTA, so if you want to learn more, I recommend you start at the PESTA documentation website, which is PESTA.dev, and it will give you lots of different information and examples on how to use it. We're going to be using a few of just the basic concepts, and we're not going to delve into things like mocks um, and things like that. We are just going to stick to some of the basic concepts about how we can write tests. Okay, so what we've got on the screen here is a very basic PESTA test. This is nothing to do with ARM templates at this point. This is just an example of how you write a test in PESTA so you can see how it works. So at the core, it's really just PowerShell, but the PESTA tooling adds some more language features that you can use to actually define your tests in a more sort of test-driven approach. So there are three concepts we're gonna really need to understand for the tests we're gonna write in a minute. So the first one is describe. So you can see here we've got a, a describe section on line two, which is just describe and then basic PESTA tests. So all describe is is a wrapper or a bucket for your tests. And you can have multiple describe sections in your test suites. It allows you to sort of logically separate your tests and have them grouped into sets of tests and so on. There is also another level um, of this called context, which is pretty much exactly the same thing, but it's another level, so you can have multiple different levels of tests. We're not going to really be using that much today, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. Just know that describe and context are wrappers that allow us to contain our tests, give it a description, um, and put that all together. So next up, we've got the it section. And this is, this is again, another type of wrapper, but this is really the wrapper for your specific tests. And so... The actual language construct there for it allows you to describe the test. So it should do this, it should not do this, uh, and so on. So you can describe the test, and this will be what will be shown when you actually run the test to tell you what's, what's been done. So in this case, we've got an it section for a test should be true, and then a test should fail. So this is the how we describe the actual test we're going to run. There's no logic here yet, but this is just a description. And then inside that, we've got our actual test. Now, this can be as complex or as simple as you want it to be. Um, but generally you're going to end up using another construct here, which is should. This is the kind of the assertion that says, in this case, true should be true. Um, it, it allows you to, to sort of actually run the test. And there are lots of different um, options for the should section. So you could should, you could have um, should be, you could have should not be, and all sorts of different variations of that. So what we're doing here is some very basic tests. We've got two tests. One of them which is comparing true to true, and one of them which is containing an empty or a null value to true. One of them should fail, one of them should succeed. So that's how we've written our very simple tests. The other part of PESTA is actually how we run those tests. So it includes a tool for running your tests. So if we hop over to the command line, and all we're going to do is execute that file, so pesta-examples.ps1. And so you can see it's run our tests and it's given us a nice color coded output to actually see what happened. So we've got our describe block, which provides the wrapper at the top. So describing basic PESTA tests. And then we've got our actual test. So a test should be true, a test that should fail. So they're based on the text we put into the actual test itself. And then when the green one obviously passes, the red one has failed and it gives you some more information on the error message and, and where in the script it failed so that you can go and debug that test. So that's a very simple getting started with PESTA. Um, as I say, if you want to get more involved, you're going to want to have a look at the documentation. There's a load of examples out there on, on using it. Um, but this should give you enough information to be able to understand what we're going to do next, which is have a look at some specific tests for an ARM template using PESTA. 
Okay, so here we've got our actual test file we've created for running some tests against our template. Now before we get started, one thing to bear in mind is what we're looking at here is tests that we can run against our template itself to check for issues in the template. What we're not doing here is looking at the resources this template deploys. Because at this point we haven't run the template, we're going to try and run this before we run our template to catch issues before we actually go and deploy resources. We'll have a look in part three of this video series about how you can actually deal with testing infrastructure that's been deployed, but for the moment we're looking at actually the template before it's been deployed. So the first thing we're doing is just some plain uh, PowerShell here, where what we're doing is we're looking for any JSON files in the same folder as this template. Um, you can configure that however you want. Obviously it's just plain old PowerShell, so you can pass in some parameters if you want to, to give it the names of the tests you want to run and so on. But one thing you will find is when you're writing PowerShell normally to actually run scripts and so on, you want to try and be as sort of modular and as reusable as possible. When you write tests, it's a bit different. And if you talk to anyone in sort of QA, you'll find that tests tend to be a bit more specific. So you're not writing them so much to be reusable, but to actually test the specific thing you're looking for. So in here, we are just looking for those folders in the files in the same folder rather than passing anything in. And so you can see I've got some hard-coded values in here for some resource group names and locations which we'll use in some of the tests we'll talk about in a minute. So if we look at the actual test, we first we've got a describe section and we've got one describe section for all of our tests which is just giving us the name of the template it's running. So if we ran this against multiple templates we would obviously get multiple describe sections each with the name of the template in them. We'll come back to this before all section because it'll make sense a bit later. Um, but next we've got a context. So I mentioned you can have describe and you can have context. So we've got describe as one big bucket for all our tests within one JSON file. And then within that describe, we've got some context sections with two of them actually. One of them which runs tests that are purely related to the actual template file, the JSON. And then the second context section is doing some work where it actually talks to the ARM API to do some additional things we'll come to in a minute. And then we get into our tests themselves. And so the first three tests here are very simple. We're just checking whether some files exists. So I've got three files that I'm expecting to find with my template. And I've seen that here, I've got a hard coded name to, for these tests because these are tests that are specific for my set of templates. Again, if you wanted to, you could parameterize them, but that makes it a bit harder. Um, and so I'm looking for the actual template, is your deployed at JSON, a parameters file, and a metadata file to go along with it. And all I'm doing is say, look in this folder and tell me whether you can find this file. So this file should exist. And I'll do that for all three of them. And so that will pass if the file is there and it will fail if the file is not there. Pretty straightforward. Okay, next we get a little bit more complicated. So what we want to do is check that the actual JSON in the file is valid. Um, otherwise, you know, if you've missed a semicolon or a bracket or something, we want to catch that nice and early. So what we're doing there are two lines in here. In the first line, what we do is we go and get the content of the actual ARM template and we use the convert from JSON command. And so if that is valid JSON, that will work and template properties will get populated with the JSON of the template. If it isn't valid JSON, then convert from JSON will fail. Now, normally that would give an error, but we're using the actual error action silently continue flag here to say, don't flag up the error, just carry on. But what that will mean is that this template properties option will be null. And then we can test against that and say template properties should not be null. And if it is, the test will fail, which means our JSON has failed to compile. So now that we know we've got valid JSON, the next thing we want to test is that the template actually has the expected sections. So as you know, all ARM templates have five or six sections in them. So that the content version, the parameters, variables, resources, outputs, and user-defined functions, which we're not actually testing for. So what we do is we give it a list of these sections that we want to find in the template. We're again going to go and query the JSON file, convert that into an object using the same command. And then we're going to use the get member command in PowerShell to go and check that each of those properties exist in the template. So we're creating an object with all those properties in here. And then we're comparing that object to the expected properties object to see that they match. One thing you'll note is when I do this, I'm actually sorting them. So we've got a sort object here and we've got a sort object at the end of this section as well. If you don't do that, whilst you might get the same values back, they might be in a different order. And so when you do the comparison, it doesn't work. So that's what that's for. 
So this will check they all exist and it will fail if any of them are missing. Then we've got another test to actually look at the content of the template resources. Now this is going to be specific to your template because obviously your template has whatever resources you've defined in it um, and that will vary from template to template. And what we're doing here is just looking to make sure that the type of resource is actually mentioned. We're not looking at the properties or anything like that. We absolutely could if we wanted to get more detailed. But in this example, we're, we're doing very simple. We're saying there needs to be a storage account, an automation account, a virtual network, and so on in this template. And so we're doing something very similar to what we did above. We're going to get the content of the actual file, converting it from JSON to an object, grabbing the resource types from the, uh, the template itself, sorting them again so that they line up, and then doing a comparison again. And that will fail if we're missing an object that we expect to be in there. So we could write this up front, but you know, before we even create the template, we could write a test here that says, okay, we know we're writing a template to, de to deploy this application. We know that needs a storage account and a web app and a function. So let's write a test to do that. And we can run our tests and it will fail if we forget to add a resource that we were expecting. And as I say, you could get really granular here. So you could you could look at not only the top level resources, but you could start looking at sub resources. You could look at the properties of the resources to compare them. Um, you could get really, really detailed if you wanted to. That's the end of that context section. The next one we've got is another context section called template validation. And what we're doing here is we're using the ARM API. So there is, whenever you deploy an ARM template, what happens the first time when you well what happens when you run it um, is first off it will run some pre-flight tests. So before it even tries and actually deploys anything, it will run some basic tests itself to say you know, to confirm this is a valid template that you can actually deploy. Um, and so you can actually run those tests by themselves without actually deploying any resources using the test az resource group deployment command. And all that will do is validate your um, template against those pre-flight checks in the Azure API. You do need connectivity to Azure to do that. And another thing you need is you do need a resource group to run it against. So despite the fact that you're not actually deploying any resources, if you try and do this without a resource group, the command expects one. And so you have to have one. And so this is where the command we saw all the way back up at the top, the before all command. So Pesta has this concept of before all and after all, and you can put them in your tests. And as the name suggests, it will do this before it does anything else. So what we have it do in this before all section is create a resource group that we're going to use for these tests. And then right at the end, we've got an after all section, which is going to delete that resource group. So the resource group only exists for the duration of the test um, and, and nothing ever gets deployed in it, but it's used purely for this test AZ resource group deployment command. And what we do is we run that command, we specify the resource group name, the mode, the template file and parameter file to run, just like you would when you're deploying a normal ARM template. We run that and we put that into a variable and then we check that that's not null. So if it errors, it will come back as null and we will know that's failed. You can also get um, the actual error result back if you want to. So you could, again, do more detailed things to actually look into the error message and so on. But all we're doing here is checking that it's not um, empty. And as I said, last thing, we'll remove that resource group that we created. So let's hop over to this command line and let's see about running those tests. So again, we're just gonna run the actual PowerShell file itself. And this is gonna start running. And it will take a little bit of time to start because it's gotta go and create that ARM template. Uh, and it will take even longer to finish because it's gotta go and delete that uh, resource group, sorry, not ARM template. Um, and so you can see it's still running here, but it's finished our tests. Um, and they've all passed expect, except for the metadata file. And that's valid. I don't actually have that file, so you can see what a failed test looks like. Um, but everything else has passed as expected. So let's go back to our code. And let's just make a syntax error in this. So I'm going to remove this comma so it's invalid JSON. And we can just check that our tests actually are working. So let's go back over to the command line. And we'll run our test again. And there we go. Um, it's going to error. And you can see it's the converts from JSON section that errors. And it's giving us a load of errors about the fact that the actual JSON file failed passing. And you can actually track it down to the line number and so on as you would with any other error. Um, you'll also find that some of the subsequent tests failed as well. Um, so for example, the test AZ resource group deployment command threw an error um, because obviously it's, it's not bad at JSON, so it can't run that.
And that's a very high level view about how you can write pester tests to actually test your ARM template. Now, as I say, you can go as deep and as granular as you want on this by using whatever you, you want of the PowerShell language to actually look at your JSON files and test them. As I mentioned, that is only as good as, as testing the actual files on your machine before you run them or running some of those API pre-flight tests that we talked about. But if we actually want to test that what's been deployed is what we thought was going to be deployed, then at the minute what we need to do there is we need to actually deploy the resources and check what's been deployed actually in Azure, which is not the most ideal state. And there are potentially things we can do in the future to try and avoid needing to deploy those resources. Things like looking at the what if command and whether that can help us. But for the moment, the simplest way to test what's been deployed is to deploy it. And so in part three of this uh, video series, next week we will have a look at how you can actually test those resources to make sure that they are what you expected to be deployed, they're configured the right way, and to detect any problems. And we'll look at a few different scenarios where that might be, be useful. So it's not just checking what you deployed, but actually potentially you could use them as some sort of security testing as well. Um, so we'll see some examples of that. If you've got any questions on how to do these sort of tests, please put a comment in the video. Otherwise, hopefully I'll see you next time and have a great rest of your day.